In the video called Lettering Overview, we looked at hatch lettering techniques used in some of these designs. I'm Linda Goodall, and now we'll see how to do it. To add lettering, click on the Lettering and Monogramming toolbox, then click on Lettering. I'm using the digitizer version, and the options and capabilities you have may vary depending on your product level. A new docker appears, then you just type. Now it's not like a word processor, there's no spell checking, and I'll just type in hatch. We have two types of fonts in hatch. We have embroidery fonts, which are pre-digitized and ready to use. You also have the option of auto-digitizing any true type font installed in your system but I really recommend sticking with the pre-created ones when you're just getting started since they're professionally digitized. I want to show you something with the TrueType though. If you do use TrueType, they are organized by style. We don't have that with embroidery fonts. So let's go back to embroidery and I'm just going to click this drop down and I want to show you all the fonts we have. Now block one is the default font but just look at all the fonts we have. Notice that over here to the side, you can see an example of how the letters might work. If you know that your font starts with, say, an S, if you press S, it'll zap you right to the S's. Or I could go to T and get to the T's. I want to choose um, Schoolbook. Once I click Schoolbook, it immediately applies and my text is updated. The next thing we need to look at is height. All fonts start with a default height of 10 millimeters. And if you're not used to working in millimeters, that's not even a half an inch tall. So they're pretty small. And depending on your font, that might be too small. How do we measure height? It's measured from the baseline. Let's zoom up. I'm going to press the plus key and it's measured from the baseline, which is the line that our letters sit on. If you write on line text, you know what the baseline is, to the cap height, and that's the height of the capital letter. So we're measuring from here to here. It doesn't account for any descenders or letters that might go above that cap height, so it's just measuring from here to here. If we want to change our size, we can do it by either clicking the up arrow to notch it up a bit or notch it down a bit or you can just type in the size that you want say 15 millimeters. Another way you can do it is to grab the handles and resize it this way. Our next options are for baselines. The normal baseline is the free line on the bottom and by free line it means that it's going to expand or shrink based on how much text we have. Now that's different from the fixed line. The fixed line we say I want this line to only be 3 inches or 60 millimeters or however wide we want it and then whatever we type is only going to be that wide. And we can choose how the letters get spaced by some options down here at the bottom. Well first I have to turn it on, then they'll show up. So these are the options that will affect how the letters get spaced on that line. We can do a quick arc, we can do vertical text, we can do a free baseline which we need to manipulate, do that another time. We also have lettering art. Lettering art is really cool because we can do some interesting distortions. Now when I say distortions, it can distort some text to where it's not very stitchable. Now see this little box here? Let me click off of that again. If I hover over that, it says more. We can see everything that's on the menu, but this little bar, these little bars up at the top mean it's a tear off menu. So if I click and hold and drag, that becomes a tear off menu. And now it makes it real easy to apply different effects. And you can see what they do. So let's remove our art. Next is our alignment. The default alignment is center. It's not going to change anything since we have just one line of text here. Now remember that baby pacifier I showed you? It said pacified and satisfied. Let me show you how to do that. So I'll add some more text. I'll do hatch by Wilcom. And let's zoom out a bit. So I've typed my text all into one box and you can see that it's one text block over here. Click on the three line layout, draw a little circle here. 
and there it is. Notice that now it's been split into three pieces. And I can move each little piece around. If I'm not real happy about that, I can undo and try a bigger circle. So I'm just dragging out and hitting enter. There's my circle. I notice that we have a larger arc this time. And I can still move those around. Now remember on that Einstein quote where it sewed from left to right and then right to left? Here's how we do that. I'll select that line and stitch it backwards. So these are your three options. Normal, center out, and kind of backwards, shall we say. Why would you use center out? Caps. When we stitch on caps or things that are tubular, round like that, it's often better to stitch from the center out so that you're always pushing towards the outside of the hoop. We have some other options down here. We can set the width. We can control the slant. Let's try, well, let's do it on the center one because it'll look weird on an arced one. So if I type in 25, I get a forward slant. If I type in minus 15, I can get a backward slant. So there's so many things you can do to your letters here. I want to change the spacing. Let's take it back to zero. And if I want to change the spacing, I could do 0.9. Did you see how those letters kind of move closer together? Let's do 0.6 and watch the letters. See how they shifted closer? Now what if you only wanted to move a couple letters? You can select the text by clicking on it. Then we'll go to the reshape tool and see these little center diamonds. We can use these to move letters closer together. Sometimes when you arc text, they get spaced out kind of strange. Press escape when you're done, and there we have it. Now that's pretty much an overview of what the lettering tab does, but we have more options. And we'll save those for another video.